Street photography is one of the most liberating and therapeutic activities that I look forward to doing when I'm traveling. As you may have already guessed, the GoPro figures centrally as my main and B camera for my point of view or POV videos. It's so effective and easy to use that I've used it in Berlin, Bratislava, Vienna, and Tokyo. In this video, I'd like to share with you my GoPro vlog and POV setup so that you can experience the same thrill as I do. First obvious question, why point of view or POV videos? Well, if you take a look at all my videos on this channel, you'd notice that most have high production value. It's a, it's a bane or a curse that I carry as a TV commercial director for almost 15 years. So where the end all seems to be high production value. It's great, but it's not easy because it takes a lot of time and effort. But the thing is, I still needed more content. So instead of lowering the production value of existing shows like this one, Hammerhead Gearhead, I decided to start a new series that takes less time and effort to make, but is equally, if not more, immersive, engaging, and entertaining. Since I love street photography, it sounded like the perfect fit. So what I needed was a show that was simple to produce with a concept that I was already doing. So it's perfect. Now, going into production side, I was thinking simplify, simplify, simplify. I wanted to be able to just use a simple camera, no changing lenses, should have been rugged, should be rugged, and run and gun. And non-destructive in terms of size and weight that it would hinder me from doing what I was actually doing in the first place, which is street photography. Hence, here we are. So let's take a look at the system. Any professional filmmaker worth his salt knows that in most cases, it's always good to have two cameras for a project, same models if possible. Now, this does not only give you additional coverage, but one would also serve as a backup when the other one falls apart or gets lost. In my case, I used two GoPro 10s that were given to me by my wife on my 40th birthday. So they are the gifts that keep on giving because of all the content that I'm able to produce with them. But why GoPro? Well, I've been using GoPros for a while now. In fact, one of my more popular videos is that of a polar bear attacking my GoPro 7 when I was doing time-lapse. You can check out the, the video here through this link. And the beauty of this setup is that it works for any model of a GoPro. But the more recent the model, of course, the better. And GoPros are tested. You can use them for vlogging, underwater, time-lapses, POVs in this case, and so much more. So let's pick apart the system. Out of the two GoPros, this is camera A. So this is what I use for my vlogging or talking heads and at times when push comes to shove for B-rolls. Lately though, I've been using my mirrorless camera for that as they are better fit for that purpose than action cameras. It's mounted on a Volta power grip via this quick release magnetic mount. So I'll talk more about that later. Wait for it. This mount is awesome. The Volta power grip on the other hand is very convenient as it charges the battery of the GoPro and it allows me to control it via Bluetooth, acts as a grip, and is also a tripod. It's one of the best purchases that I've made for my GoPro rig. Now for audio, I've tried everything. I have tried using my Dati D4 Mini through a media mod on this GoPro, the media mod mic, and even just the GoPro as is, and nothing beats the quality, literal ease of use, and the price of the Windslayer foam mount. I learned of this through reviews and didn't believe them until I started to use it. Check it out. Hey guys, top of the morning. It's 6.30 a.m. now here in Vienna, Austria and I'm walking to the Vienna Erdberg station to board my Flixbus to Bratislava. All right, we're here now in the old town of Bratislava after that one hour-ish bus ride. So I'm, I'm gonna go and get some breakfast first. The Windslayer comes in too when you buy it. Cheap enough to replace, is light, packable, and no maintenance required. So it's perfect. 
Now this is camera B and it's my coverage camera. So I use it to get extra perspectives for a scene that I'm shooting. So I could put it on a suction cup mount and put it on the side of a bus on the window or in an underwater housing when I'm shooting and it doesn't have anything really on it, even a wind slayer because I don't need the audio from it. It also does not have any other mounts that's permanently fitted to it aside from this nifty quick release mount magnetic mount because in this case for point of view videos i would mount it on a chest rig so with this mount i could just attach when i'm ready to shoot or remove when i'm done so easy now let's dive into the settings so for vlogging and talking heads i use standard which is at 5.3k 24 fps and linear plus now for the chest camera, it's at 4K 60 and at super view. Now, generally speaking, all settings and presets are the same on both GoPros so that if ever I had to switch one with the other or another one fails and have to use another one as backup, it's easy for me to do so and I can just continue shooting seamlessly and effortlessly. But there is one setting that is starkly different between the two and if you look at them, Right now, you would notice that on the right, the front screen is turned on and set to the correct aspect ratio. And on the left, it's turned off. So the reason being that with my camera A, I use this for vlogging, so I need to know if I'm framed well. While with camera B, I don't want other people to see that I'm actually filming with it when it's on my chest. So I've turned that off, plus I've turned off all other beeps and anything that will just give me away. When it comes to batteries, two pairs are usually enough for this type of shooting. So that's four in total. For camera A, I use the regular GoPro battery because it's supplemented anyway by my GoPro Volta power grip. And for my coverage camera, camera B, I would use the Enduro battery so that I have 38% more battery life and it's more resistant to cold. Now these batteries go into the Think Tank DSLR battery holder four. So two would fit snugly into one slot, two batteries, and along with all my other batteries for my mirrorless camera. So that's all neat. When it comes to my micro SD cards, they all go into this Think Tank Secure Pixel Pocket Rocket. Secure because of this zipper, which is crucial when you're using these microscopic SD cards. I have four of these 128 gigabyte micro SD cards for this type of shooting. Before we go into the accessories, if you like this video so far, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, if you want to purchase any of the items I've shown or are about to show, all the links are in the description below. Okay, let's get on it. First, mounts. The motivation and thinking behind all these mounts is that they should give me, as a solo shooter, the most options for unmanned coverage. They're like force multipliers. You've already seen the Volta grip and you've seen the chest mount. Let's get to the others. First would be this HSU three-way floating grip, selfie stick, and tripod. This is actually the first mount I bought, mainly because of the uses that I could get out of it, whether it's at sea or as a tripod or just as is for vlogging or a selfie stick. I haven't used it much though because of the Volta power grip, but I might in the near future and I'll explain why later. Next would be this Django gripper mount. So I got the idea for this in Peter McKinnon's channel and it's originally meant for bike helmets or motorbike helmets like so, but it also works for backpacks and other, how would I say, surfaces and edges that need a bigger sized jaw. I also bring a Telesyn suction cup. So this is pretty handy if you want shots inside the car or from inside the car or bus, like I have here in this shot in a bus on the way to Bratislava in Slovakia. So I have it on the window. I could also have it inside my car phasing out through the windshield if I want to show the viewer where I'm going. Next is the GoPro magnetic swivel clip for metal surfaces. Obviously, as the name implies, magnetic. 
and if I wanted a clamp for very, very thin edges. I also bring this mini clamp and mini magic arm from Small Rig for situations wherein I need to really lock down the GoPro, say time lapses. So I could use this in tandem with the quick release mount, clip it, mount it, and I don't have to worry about it ever falling off. When space and weight permits, I also bring this Joby Gorillapod 1K for a lot of uneven surfaces that I need to mount on. This is perfect and light. I also bring this extension arm with again, quick release mounts on both sides. So I rarely actually bring this, but I just made it anyway if I need it. So this one is very light actually, and it's very thin. So if I choose to bring it, it's no problem. Now let's go into the heart of this rig setup, which is the quick release mount that I've been talking about. So without further ado, it's this, the Olanzi Magnetic Quick Release Mount. So this has saved so much time for me when it comes to switching out my GoPro with all the mounts that I have available. So all it does is that it's, well, magnetic. So you put one, so that's quite strong. The magnet is quite strong. You put one on your GoPro or GoPros, and the other one on your GoPro mounts. So now you no longer have to keep on uh, screwing in and then screwing out when you have to change mounts. So everything you can do with this mount. So let me demonstrate. So when one is on the GoPro, another one on the mount and just let the magnet do its work and then you twist it like so for that added security. It's pretty secure. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as say that it's secure enough underwater as well for my underwater tray and GoPro, but so far, topside, none of my GoPros have fallen. And also, you have two options. You can use the one with the, the GoPro mount or another with a quarter 20. So you can easily use this mounting, quick release mounting system also with anything that fits here. So whenever you purchase one of these quick release mounts, it comes with both the quarter 20 and the GoPro mount. So it's amazing. I don't think I could do what I do without these. Being the best solution for a requirement doesn't mean it's without its problems. And there are a few. So first off would be focus. So the minimum focus distance of a GoPro is 12 inches. So if you brought it closer to the subject closer than 12 inches, then the subject becomes out of focus. So you can see where I'm getting at with the Volta grip. Sometimes I have a tendency to bring it closer than 12 inches. And the reason actually I hold it up like this is because I like the framing. I have it on linear and horizon leveling. So that's perfect. And also because I want the best audio. So the closer it is to me, the better the audio with the wind slayer. Now, I do have the tendency to bring it close and I just go out of focus as you can see in this video. And the only solution really is one to just hold it out like that. Or I use probably an HSU three-way tripod slash selfie sticks to really bring the camera out. And I, I, I don't want to do that again for audio and framing issues, or I could just probably get a mirrorless like FX30 with a Sony 11 um, mm lens, 1.8 lens, and that would work. So, well, I'm still going to try it with the Volta, of course. I just have to really be mindful of how far away it is. The thing about it being too far away aside from the framing and the audio issues is that I create a bigger footprint and I don't want to be too disruptive in the shooting space that I normally find myself in. Another weakness of the system would be the lack of lensing options. So a GoPro only has one lens, but different fields of view options. And I would like the freedom of having like, let's say a 24 to 70 lens equivalent. And the only way to do that is to have a different camera. And that's what I've been doing. I have my main camera, which is a mirrorless camera anyway. So I shoot my B-rolls with that and everything else with the GoPros. The one upgrade that I would definitely do would be to get the GoPro 11 Black Mini. So it's smaller, no screen, so less noticeable. I don't need the screen anyway, but its max resolution and sensor are larger. So I have more room to pan vertically. 
Plus, a GoPro Max lens mod is also something interesting, you know, bigger field of view. So these two things are great to explore in the near future. And that is it for my GoPro vlogging and point of view POV setup. Effective, lightweight, and adaptable. I have been having so much fun with this, so I hope you will too after watching this video. And if you haven't seen any of my POV videos, then click the link here to the playlist. You can also see the photos in my Instagram accounts. So first would be the Roadworthy Man, where all my travel street portraits are stored or displayed, showcased, both film and digital. And also Noel Guevara photo for all of my conservation and wildlife work. So please follow both and check out all my work there. If you have any suggestions on how to improve the setup, drop them in the comments. If you have any questions, then make yourself heard drop them in the comments as well. So that's it. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.